So starting off with many, 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 many clay projects is a pinch pot. Um, this video is going to demonstrate the beginning of a pinch pot piggy bank. I'm going to show you how to take one piece of clay and divide it into two pieces of clay equal so that you can make two equal size balls of clay, make two pinch pots, two little bowls, put them together to make sort of a potato shape that will be the body of your pig or other creature. So the first thing that you do is pinch off a little bit of clay that's going to be your extra. So there's my extra clay. Then with what's left, divide that in half so that you have two approximately the same size pieces of clay. Work them into balls of clay and I like to work mine in my hands and not roll them. Some people like to roll them on the table but I end up getting a cone when I do that. So I just work them in my hands and I can feel what's happening with the clay as I turn it. It doesn't have to be the most perfect ball that you've ever seen in your life it just needs to be pretty darn round, okay? Make two of those. Trying to get rid of most of your lumps and bumps. All right, so now I've got two equal sized pieces of clay. The next step to make a pinch pot is take your thumb, put it in the center, and you want to turn and twist your thumb into the clay. Don't push it down onto the table because that'll give you a flat bottom pot. You want to keep it round for as long as possible. You're going to twist and push your thumb into the clay until you, ha you can feel the amount of clay between your thumb and your finger should be about right there. That's where I am. So I've got a hole on the inside of my clay and my clay is approximately even all the way around to start with. If it's not, that's not that big a deal. Just pay attention as you're pinching. So then you're going to put your thumb in. Thumbs up, nice pot. Thumbs down, dumpy pot. Don't make a dumpy pot. Always keep your thumb up as you are working, as you're making your pinch pot. So then you're going to take your two fingers and you're going to squeeze the clay between your thumb and your two fingers. Gentle squeeze, turn, squeeze, turn. All the way around. And you're going to go in a spiral motion all the way around your pot. Notice how I haven't put this on the table. I want to keep that nice round bottom and I'm paying attention to how much I'm squeezing. I don't want any major thin spots. So that has given me a pinch pot with one pass. It's still pretty darn thick. So I'm going to go through and do it again. And that gives me a little bit thinner. Now, I've got a couple of techniques that I call scoop and swoop. They're not actual technical terms. I just call them that because if you take your finger and put it on the inside of your clay against the palm of your hand, you can press and scoop that clay towards you. Turn, press, and scoop. You've got to pay attention to how much pressure you're using. You don't want to press too hard and make your clay too thin. Always press against the palm of your hand because if you don't, if you press over here, then you're going to go through the side of your pot. The other reason you want to press against the palm of your hand is because it compresses the particles of clay, makes them stronger. So now again, I'm getting a much thinner pot. My next technique that I want to show you is swoop. So it's the same idea, except instead of pulling towards you, you swoop to the side. And you can make a pinch pot pretty fast this way. Always make sure that you're turning 
and you're pressing evenly and you're pressing against the palm of your hand. So now I've got an even pinch pot with a nice round bottom and I'm ready to do the next one. So once you have made two pinch pots, you need to make sure that the openings are approximately the same size because we're going to put them together. Then you'll gently tap them on the table to give them a nice flat spot turn and twist, twist and tap, so you've got a flattened area, all right? Once you get that, then you're going to make sure that they fit together nicely. And I've got a little bit of an overlap on this one, so I want to make this one a little bit wider. Make sure they fit together. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to take my toothbrush and I'm going to score and slip. So I'm going to go ahead and score this up. And I'm going to do the same thing with my other one. Score it all the way around. You can use a fork to make it faster if you have one. Forks work great. All right. Then you're going to carefully piece them together. Making sure that they line up without major gaps. And I'm gently pushing them together. Sealing those ends. Okay, then I'm going to set this over to the side. I'm going to take my other clay and I'm going to roll a coil. This coil doesn't need to be super thick. Just about the width of the tip of your pinky is fine. Then I'm going to score and slip right along the seam. Now, I haven't wet my toothbrush anymore. There's still plenty of water on there. And I'm going to add my coil of clay right on that seam. And I'm going to blend it down. Now, if your pots are pretty soft, they might mush a little bit. So you got to be super careful. Blend it down all the way around. And then turn around and go the other way. Blend it back the other way. If your fingers don't work very well, you can use a modeling tool or the end of a toothbrush and push that clay. Okay. 
blend it. And smooth it. And then you're going to take it and roll it on the table to work it into shape. Now the next thing that I would do is use a rib or a credit card to smooth out this surface. And I need to make sure that I poke a hole in here so that my air has a place to go as this is shrinking. So I'm gonna go ahead and poke my hole before I wrap up my clay. If your clay is super soft, then you're not gonna wanna put a wet paper towel on it. If it's a little bit stiffer, then you might wanna put a, a barely damp paper towel on it. Wring it out so no water comes out, drape it over the top, and wrap it up.